from your high school. So you can see what can happen when you do big things, okay? So she has to come and speak to you today. We were more than happy to make that happen. And as I said earlier, we'll have an opportunity during lunch today to get an autograph from her if you like, which would be pretty cool. Because she's what they call a world-class athlete. And you don't get that title very often. So I'm going to turn it over to Ann Price, and uh, we'll go from there. this area in probably in five years. So it's really nice to finally be home and be back because this is where it all started. This is where everything kind of came together for me. I was a four sport athlete. I did softball, basketball, volleyball, track and field. I did everything. Even though, um, you know, it's just been a great experience for me. I did many different sports. I um, graduated with a 3.9 GPA and I uh, couldn't be happier. And then I went to Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, and uh, I just finished my degrees in management and account, uh, accountancy with a minor in business law. And I finished with a 3.4 GPA, and I'm so happy to be done. <laughs> but uh, I'm just really excited to be here. So uh, raise your hand if you know exactly what a hammer throw is. Okay. So do you think it's a hammer? Or do you think it's this right here? This is it. This is a hammer. This is an 8.8 pound ball on a 3 foot 11 inch twire. And you do four consecutive turns in a 7 diameter ring, and you throw it as far as you can. I can throw this over 240 feet. And right now I am ranked 8th in the world. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Now, in 2013-2014, I'm two-time NBC Field Athlete of the Week, 
and uh, I ended up tearing my MCL, stretched out my ACL and PCL. I was out for nine months, nine months. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate. Uh, I made sure, even though I had a poor knee, I still competed at the NBC conference because we wanted to win. We had a chance to take that opportunity, and we ended up getting second and losing by only one point. But it was totally worth it, and, uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to represent, you know, the NBC very well. Uh, so I ended up lecturing the next following year. And uh, during those nine months, this rehab, working out, the pain, the, just, it was, it was hard, guys. It is not easy coming back from an injury, but I made sure that injury did not define who I was. Every time I ever got hurt, I made sure that I came back to be even better to prove that this injury wasn't going to take me out of the competition. Four weeks before season started indoors, my coach came up to me and he goes, hey, guess what? By this time, I've had nine months off. He goes, you have four weeks to get ready for our first ever indoor competition. Get ready. I think I cried every single day because I didn't feel prepared, I didn't feel ready. And uh, he was actually correct. And uh, I ended up being the hammer champion. I was third in distance, fourth in shot, and I was I placed third in indoor nationals in the weight pro. And uh, you know, I ended up being the USATF runner up against Amber Campbell with all the pros, but just my junior year in college. And then uh, I ended up going and making three USATs. NACAX, which was in uh, Costa Rica, Pan Ams, which was in Toronto, Canada, and Beijing, China, as world championships. I, keep, I competed against the best in the world when I was just a junior in college. The NC Division One record at 7309. I won two times in the NCAA championship and the first ever division so was 73. And uh, right now I hold six of the ten farthest throws in NCAA history. And uh, let me tell you something, guys. There's nothing better when you look on those record boards. It's not easy your name. <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, but it just kind of affirms that how much hard work you need to put into something, you get something right to come out. So this is Barcelona, Spain, right? Is it? That was in 2012. I made a junior world team. You can start now, guys. You have an opportunity to do great things. You don't have to wait to college. You don't have to wait until you know you feel prepared. Start working now. It'll be so much easier for the future. So then you have opportunities. So you can have open doors. And it's not just an athletic way. You have to do it athletically and academically, especially if you want a sports scholarship. They're looking for the trifecta. Your personality, your grades, and your athleticism. San Jose, Costa Rica, I placed second in the whole North America, and it was fantastic. Uh, I was able to really visit and meet a lot of great individuals. Toronto, Canada, that was fun. Uh, placed fourth. Tokyo, Japan, that was our training camp. And if anyone knows, where's 2020? Olympics? Tokyo. Yes, Tokyo, Japan. Very excited to go back and visit. I was able to see, you know, the, uh, the summer palace, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was something, you know, if you guys get a chance to really get out there and look at the world, you, you can. And it's a great, great time. In Beijing, China, that was the first mess where they competed in 2004. And then Rio de Janeiro. This was probably one of my best times ever. Because I'm sitting there and I'm looking most of the athletes. I'm now an Olympian, which is mind-blowing to me to even think about it. Because, you know, people tell me, well, you just can't control it, right? You know? And but I sit there and now I sit there and I go, yeah, I can't even control if you can or not. What's up? Even a small community, even small schools can do great things. And let me tell you something, guys. The door is open. All you have to do is walk through it. Now, what it takes to be a great athlete? 
you have to break the social, basically, the molds that you fit yourself into. You have to break through and to be that next great person is you have to find out who you really are as a person. You don't have to be like me, but find out what works best for you. What works? Like, who likes art? Who does sports? Raise your hand. That's good. Who likes math? <laughs> There's a couple of hands. Like science, English, PE, all these things can make you into who you want to be as long as you excel in them. You know, don't try to be something that you're not. Be who you are because that's what's going to be the best that you can be. I train about five hours for six days a week. Five hours, six days a week. I can count how many times I've been home. I've been only 15 times home in six years. In five years. Five years, I've been home 15 times. And uh, my mother isn't too happy about that. <laughs> but no, it's been great. Um, you have to have a certain kind of determination. Determination to look and say what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and why you're doing it. For me, what makes me strive is knowing that I'm doing it for you guys. Knowing that I'm doing it for the next generation to be the best that they can be. Knowing that I'm paving the way for you guys. So you guys can get in there and say, hey, you know, this girl from Troy Buchanan did it. Why can't I? Because you guys can. You guys all have special gifts. You guys all have special talents. It's just being able to get them doing it. Eating healthy. Not enough, but it's thing to do. I like cake. I love cake. If there's cake on the table, it's going down. And, uh, but you have to be healthy to be a great athlete. So, you know, a racing car. What do you put in racing cars? Gasoline, but it's high premium gas, correct? You want to put in vegetable oil, right? So that's how your body runs. You have to put in good food to get the best in your performance. When I wake up in the morning, I have my carbs, I have a half a bagel, two protein eggs, avocado, cheese. Hit all the dairy products and every single thing on that pyramid so that I can have the best that I can be and my brain can optimize its full capacity. So, water, drinking water, very simple, metallic, that's good. Uh, exercising, mental strength, and po positive body image. That is my biggest thing is positive body image. When I was younger, even though I was smaller, I've been small, I've been big. And you know what? Being, even if you get one percent of your absolutely perfect looking, something you'll find wrong about yourself. That's what I've learned. It's being able to be comfortable with yourself. Being able to look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? I'm a good person. I'm a good, I'm a, I'm a great athlete. And I am beautiful because you know what? I can smile and I can change someone else's life today. That's what makes a great person. It's not, you know, when I sit there and I think, yeah, I'm Olivia, that's great. But knowing that I can come and talk to you guys, that makes me even more happier. That makes me happier. If I would have won the gold, that's great. But being here is probably the biggest moment for me. Because I get to sit here and talk to you. And knowing that someone here might feel uncomfortable with their body. Someone here might feel uncomfortable with social standards. But just to let you know that it's okay. If you want to be who you are, you have to accept yourself first. You have to accept who you are and making yourself happy. Because when you're not happy, things are going to be hard. And how can you be happy with yourself and just love the life that you live when you just feel sad? Being able to look in the mirror and smile, that's the first step. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, you have to tell yourself a thousand times that you are a good person and that you are beautiful, do it. Do it. Look at that mirror and tell yourself that.
let me tell you something. Look in that mirror, and you know it, and just sit there and say, that will not define me. The bad things that happen to me will not mean who defines myself. You will take that door will open, and you know what, if that door starts to close or shut, jump through the window, get to the next part, go over those obstacles, because you can do it, and I know you can, because I can't. So, long story short, so you guys want to hear a funny story? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, I'm in the Olympic Village. The door opens. Guess who's there? Michael Phelps. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Phelps is right there. So I walk in, he does his hat on, glasses, try to look all inconspicuous. And I was like, okay. So I walk in, and I look at him, and I was like, I see you, Michael. I see you. And he looks over me and smiles. But, you know, he still looks like he wouldn't talk and kind of being quiet. Finally, I go, Michael, I know who you are. And I was like, you don't know who I am, but one day you will know who I am. That's confidence. That's how the ability to know that sooner or later, I will be at that next level. And those things have been nice. It's a great feeling. And now me and my friends should be good friends. <laughs> but uh, meeting great happens. But Gabby Douglas, Simone Biles, Venus and Serena Williams sisters. I got to meet so many great athletes. And you know what? They're the best personalities also. They smile, they're nice, they're kind. I was like, sportsmanship goes a long way. I've met, all the pro athletes that I've met are kind and nice. And you know what, I've never seen at the Olympic Village a negative athlete, because it doesn't take you anywhere. Being negative will not take you anywhere. It won't, will not work. And you know what, I just hope that you guys take away something from this and let you know that you can be whatever you want to be, and you can break that social mold, that social mold. And uh, thank you for letting me speak to you guys, I appreciate it.